know you're from Indiana if, part four, you drive by corn on the way to anywhere and don't live on a farm. It's easier to find a church than a Starbucks. You have to switch from AC to heat and possibly back to AC again in the same day. Is it even necessary I say anything? You think the state bird is Larry? be back with more. You know you're from Indiana if, part three, you have absolutely no idea what the word Hoosier is. But man, we're proud to be one. When we talk about flea markets, you already know we're talking about Shipshawana. You still talk about that time Bobby Knight threw a chair. The worst traffic jams are behind tractors. The only right way to eat a tenderloin is with a teeny tiny bun. And sugar cream pie is at every family event. Stay tuned for more. So Isabella lived in Sullivan, Indiana with her husband where she reportedly practiced black magic and witchcraft. So Isabella was a witch, but not one who used magic for good in order to benefit herself and benefit those around her. She used it for darker purposes because she had a fascination and a love for Lucifer and she wanted to dedicate her life to him. So she had a hand put on the top of her grave, pointing to the area in the woods behind the cemetery where she had done a ritual in order to bring Lucifer to her so that she could dedicate her life, her love, and her loyalty to Lucifer and show him that basically she would do whatever he wanted. And she even put a curse on her tombstone so that whenever you read the popular quote that was put on tombstones at the time, that you would also end up. Part three. So she had put a curse on her tombstone on the popular quote, which I will read and show you guys. It's not going to do anything to you. In order to basically curse whoever stands above her grave and reads it so that they either die unless they want to go where the hand is pointed and basically do their own ritual to devote their own lives to Lucifer as well, which obviously we didn't do, but we also don't feel like we got cursed either. Mine so it took us a minute to clear it off, but this is what it said. It is such an old tombstone, so it's very, very hard to read, so I'll outline it so that you guys can read along with me. Okay, so it says, Remember friends as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you must be prepared for death and follow me. And it said that she put a curse on it, so that basically if you don't... Hi guys. So, um, coming from my new place, um, I do a different angle, but the sun is really bright and I won't be able to see crap. So, the other day I came across, and I'm kind of sad that I missed it, it is a live series that Abby the Witch and Jasmine Ambrosia have been doing called Circle City Witches, and they were talking a lot about um, Indiana history and paganism, and it's, it's, it's really interesting. I'll put it in the description box along with Eerie's Witchcrafts video, also on some Indiana witchcraft history. Um, because it get, kind of gave me a kickstart on continuing my series, All That's Dark in Indiana. And so I'm going to be telling the stories of a few uh, well-known um, Indiana witches or, or stories. Uh, the first one is a lady that I came across and I cannot find anything on her. She uh, was born in Salzburg, Indiana, and lived in Sullivan with her husband. And she was known as Mary Elizabeth uh, McCray Kirkman, or Bella, or Isabella Kirkman. And I've seen stuff on her grave. Apparently, she was Luciferian. And there's some kind of uh, story where there's some type of curse tied to her grave if you stand at the grave and read her passage. She was apparently Luciferian dedicated her life to Lucifer um, and there's just all kind of, there's some you know things that will happen if you say this read her passage from her grave aloud things will happen um, but when I tried to research this lady I couldn't find anything I don't even know what cemetery it's in 
Um, and I asked the lady who did the story, and I'm waiting on her to reply back. Um, she's the first lady that I'm going to be talking about. And when I was watching the live the other day, I happened to hear about a lady named Lillian Lynn. <clears throat> Now, Lillian Lynn was born in 1889, and she passed in 1985, and legend has it that she was a practitioner, and she lived alone um, on Cedar Road in Fort Wayne, and um, kids would come and harass this poor old lady all the time. And she was constantly upset and going out and screaming at these, you know, rebel, rebellious, unruly teenagers. And as the story goes, one of the kids uh, threw a cigarette into her house, and the house caught fire, and she allegedly perished in this fire. Um, but the, there's no documentation of a fire, which is kind of weird, but it was the 80s, so maybe... You know, after so many years, they do get rid of that type of thing. Um, uh, it could be that, you know, it's just, you know, they're they're kind of kind of, you know, after so many years. Um, but she was apparently um, an actress, and uh, they were talking about find a grave, and I I, I found the grave. Um, and people were kind of like looking things up. What I found is that her name was not Lillian or Lily. Her That was her middle name. Her first name was actually um, Susie. Um, she did have a husband and a son. There was no um, information that I could really find on the son. don't know if he passed or if he was disinherited. Uh, she was a widow not sure exactly when her husband died she did have a power of attorney and apparently she died uh, a few years back um and she did not perish in the home she perished in a local nursing home and is actually uh buried out in a cemetery in fort wayne um and apparently all this happened at Devil's Hollow. Well, from what I researched, I did in Fort Wayne, there's actually two Devil's Hollows, one north, one south. Um, and she did not perish in a fire. It could be that, you know, she became ill due to these kids or went out to yell at these kids and injured herself and her power of attorney put her in the nursing home. Um, or, you know, there's not a lot uh, concerning her death but apparently you know whether or not she was a practitioner she may have been um, so that local legend is um, uh, kind of <laughs> kind of dispelled that one um, another one is the story of the three Tully sisters their father Charles Tully had started a trading post and eventually became a small town known as Tully Town and Mr. Tully was half French and half Shawnee, of Shawnee descent. Um, and he apparently had three daughters who, as the story goes, were practicing witches. Um, and they uh, practiced around the uh, Mistletoe Falls area, um, which is also known as the Witch's Castle. And I'm going to go into a bit more into that at a later date. Um, anyway... <clears throat> according to some of the stories uh, that is why the witch's castle had been burnt down um, come to find out that it was started by a stepson and it was after the situation with the Tully sisters but because these sisters were half Shawnee um, or part Shawnee uh, that didn't help with the situation because the locals had lost some had some skirmishes with the Shawnee people in that area and they were a bit resentful um, one is that they had, of course, burned them out of town. Another one is that they had tied them to a raft, which to me is quite plausible, uh, considering some of the things I've learned with history of my state. Um, <clears throat> they had tied the girls to a raft, set the raft adrift. It had gone over some falls of the Ohio River, and apparently the ladies drowned. Or they could have just been ran out of town for being, um, part Chani and, um, practicing Native American spirituality and people 
being who they were. If, if you weren't going to church, then you were a witch. So, um, that's uh, some information that I had found out. And another lady who is rather infamous and made all kind of headlines um, is a lady named um, Irene Ray. And she lived in the town of Plymouth with her husband and uh, her daughter. Um, don't know if 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 the uh, husband was the father of her child or not i'm going to go into that here in a minute as to why um they lived in the town of plymouth and were ran out of that town um for allegedly practicing witchcraft and then they moved to the town of uh rockville indiana um and while she was there <laughs> Uh, apparently they were a family in need, um, and they did receive welfare, which really started to make the residents, uh, very, uh, resentful that she was living off of taxpayers' money. Um, rumors started to swell from Plymouth and all of this about how she was a practicing witch. Um, I guess there was a young person who Irene would visit regularly and wanted to buy antiques off of, and the person refused and became very, very ill. Uh, there was a farmer, she would had a history of cutting through a farmer's field, and he confronted her because he didn't want her running through the field, and she looked down at his potato farm, and it doesn't make any difference whether uh, I walk through here or not, you know, my, these potatoes. These potatoes aren't going to grow, and they didn't. Um, she was blamed for a very long history of floods, fires, insomnia, other illnesses, and the uh, more infamous um, incident was <clears throat> her um, her granddaughter was removed from the home by uh, the local sheriff um, back in the 1930s, or you know, 40s, uh, in our state, if they did not feel that you were a moral person, you weren't, um, of loose morals or, or weren't, um, you know, going to church every Sunday, um, they could and did remove your, your child from your home due to, uh, you know, moral issues. Um, not, you know, there was no evidence of neglect, just they didn't feel, probably because of the witchcraft rumors, um, that, uh, the, the, the child was removed, and apparently Irene had a conversation with the wife and was dancing and singing, you're going to be sorry because you um, took my grandkid. Um, and uh, not too long after that, the sheriff died of, of an apparent heart attack. <clears throat> that's karma, but that's a whole nother um, story. Um... And then I did find a story about a lady named Carol, Carolyn or Carolyn, Caroline or Carolyn Pfeiffer in Evansville, um, who, because of a 19-year-old girl named Julie, Julia, um, who had been confined to her bed for three months, um, She uh, uh, was attacked by Julie's cousin um, and, uh, and had a piece of her clothing removed and her vegetable stand um, demolished. Um, and <laughs> all because they thought that that would dispel the whole uh, spell that was put on this poor girl. Um, and again with 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 violence um in the state so apparently um irene uh back in that that time period irene kind of getting off track and all over the place but um apparently in the 1940s um there was a law con concerning vagrancy so it was illegal to be homeless so after the neighbors uh yeah violence against alleged witches, the, the neighbors kept pressuring the police to uh, 
do something to charge her and arrest her with witchcraft. So what the police were able to do is because the family was then homeless, um, charged her with vagrancy and arrested her. And uh, it, she promised she would leave town and which the family did. Um, I don't know whether or not um, the daughter got her kid back. I know that there was a lot of things in the articles about their weird cat um, that they had when they moved. So I don't know what happened to the cat either. Um, but um, she, you know, two towns where she's, you know, a kid. <laughs> you know, been accused of witchcraft, whether she started these rumors herself to keep people away, who knows. Um, it was said that she was of Native, Amer of Native American descent. Um, I don't know what tribe. I'm trying to give Native, Native Americans in this state had a really bad rap. Um, so she did agree to leave town. They did move. And some months later, um, she and her husband were walking home during a storm and on the wrong side of the street and the driver could not see and because they were on the wrong side uh the couple was hit by the uh the driver it was ruled an accident so the driver was never charged with anything um you know due to the low visibility and and things like that um the husband did sustain some pretty severe head injuries um and uh, the daughter uh, went to court and filed some charges saying that her stepfather, so that's kind of why I kind of question whether um, Charles was the father of um, I Ioli, I, I cannot pronounce her name, of the daughter, but she'd apparently tried to have him committed um, because, again, it said her stepfather was not of sound mind. Um, Irene did die due to, um, her injuries, so, um, <laughs> some, some pretty sad stuff here, um, that's just, you know, how, how, uh, things went <laughs> back then, um, but those are some of the, the, the six or seven, you know, uh, witchcraft stories, um, in Indiana.